frequently asked question. How do you deal with exhaust blowing and how do you stop it from happening again? I've always thought that this is a subject that I ought to make a video of because it does seemingly bother a lot of motorcyclists. But the new water-cooled Bonnevilles have a double-skinned exhaust header which stops the exterior from blowing so it wasn't something I could really demonstrate in a video up until recently. Now exhaust blowing is really a modern problem on bikes. In days gone by, if your headers blowed up, it meant that your engine was running too lean, which could have catastrophic consequences to the engine itself through overheating. But in these modern times of environmental control, manufacturers have been forced to make engines run ever more lean in an effort to lessen the internal combustion engine's impact on the environment. The engines are built to take these higher temperatures nowadays, and although some people do just accept it as a fact of life, a lot of people really don't like the headers turning blue. And the reality is there's nothing that you can do to stop it. But the question that you've got to ask is do you just leave it as it is or do you clean it off periodically? Well my answer to that is you should clean it off once or twice a year and I'll explain the reasons why. Stainless steel does have an iron content and the lower the grade of stainless steel the more iron it contains and high temperatures cause a reaction that causes a form of oxidation in that magnetite is forced to the surface of the metal where it reacts with oxygen and forms a sort of a skin over the exhaust header surface now magnetite itself is actually black but because of the thickness of the layers that form and the way that it refracts light it can appear to the human eye to be anything from blue to a sort of a reddy pink colour and the thicker it is the darker it is. Now for the last decade or so manufacturers had to move away from mild steel which was chrome plated or painted because it quite simply wouldn't have been able to withstand the temperatures and the exhaust wouldn't have lasted very long but stainless steel itself isn't indestructible and in time, okay, a long time, this will cause the surface of the exhaust header to develop pits, which long term will affect its structural integrity. But more importantly, for the biker that takes pride in his machine, it will start to affect the aesthetic appeal of his pipes. And the longer you leave it before you clean it, the more obvious those pits are going to be. Now, I can't offer you a magic bullet that will quickly and painlessly take away the blue from your exhaust and stop it from ever coming back there's no such thing but what I can show you is an effective and efficient method for removing the blue from your exhaust headers that will leave you with the best possible aesthetic finish Right, first of all you must make sure that your exhaust system is completely cool and you need to forget all about microfiber cloths because they're no good for this job any motorist store should sell cotton stockinette. This has been a motor trade staple for decades. And if you're using some form of abrasive polish on any surface, this is the stuff to use. It's basically a long, loosely woven cotton tube. And you simply cut bits off the end as you need them. And you're also going to need some polish. Now there are two types of metal polish that I like to use. One is a sort of medium to coarse grade and the other is a very fine grade. And neither of them are Solvol Autosol. To my mind Solvol Autosol, although it is a very good cutting compound, it is way too harsh and it will leave scratches behind. It's okay for using on a brushed stainless steel finish, but I wouldn't go anywhere near a mirror polished finish with it. All it's gonna do is make the job harder and longer longer to sort out. Now for heavily blued metal or scratched metal, the best polish that I've found is T-Cut's Original Metal Polish. I'd describe this as a medium to high cut polish. But the beauty of it is that although it does have a high cut rate, it has very fine carbide particle counts. So although it does leave some marks behind, they're much finer than you would experience with Solvol Autosol. 
which means that when you finish using it you're going to have a lot less clean up work afterwards bringing the surface back to the finish that you want you need to cut your stockinette up into strips and i usually found that about a four inch width is ideal if you put your fingers through the loops at each end and stretch it it will narrow in the middle and the loops at the end are also convenient for holding on to now i don't know what you call this motion it's a sort of a sawing motion but basically wrap the stockinette around the exhaust pipe once and then use an alternating motion to create friction now as with all polishing processes polish has a liquid content and this is for lubrication to allow it to polish and abrade so you must keep it wet at all times now the problem with polishing in this manner is that it does generate friction which generates heat so you need to keep feeling the exhaust pipe and if it's warming up move to a cooler area if the cloth starts to stick it's an indication that you've dried the polish out and you need to apply some more just keep at it and when your cloth becomes heavily soiled change it for a fresh one and start again and on your average pipe i would expect you to go through five or six or maybe even more fresh strips of cloth before you've finished Right, so use the teacup metal polish until you've removed most of the blue and then it's time to move on to the second stage and for this with a fresh cloth I use the Meguiar's all metal polish this comes in a tub and it's a very fine paste that you apply with your fingers and this is what's going to give you that final sort of mirror polished look that more resembles the finish that their pipes actually came with from the factory if you look at it at this stage you will see that the teacup polish has left some very fine linear scratches in the metal where you've been working on it and you need to get rid of that another thing that i will mention there will be some areas where the blue doesn't seem to come off and if you look carefully you'll probably find that they're in the same area of the pipe along its entire length and this is because the pipe isn't perfectly round now it will actually have been made up from a flat metal sheet that's been rolled around a mandrel and then welded up and that area where it's been welded up and the weld has actually been ground off will probably be slightly lower than the rest of the pipe so your cloth will have been missing it now regular use of these polishes and this method to clean your pipe will eventually wear your pipe down to the point where that's no longer a problem but what you are going to have to do is either accept that those marks are going to remain there for now or at the end clean those off by hand with the Meguiar's polish using the cloth in exactly the same manner with the Meguiar's polish continue cleaning the pipe up and down checking regularly to make sure that it doesn't get too hot and as time goes on you'll start to see that original mirror finish coming back now I'm not going to lie to you this does take some time this whole process on this one pipe took me best part of an hour but once you've got on top of it 10 minutes once a month would keep it more or less looking that way although as i said earlier on you do need to be doing this at least twice a year now these pipes are seven years old and although the bike hasn't done a lot of mileage they wear quite badly scratched because someone's obviously attempted to remove these with something quite abrasive like wire wool or something like that so there was a lot of work involved in getting it back to the original finish you might not find that yours are that bad unless Unless, of course that blue has had years to build up in which case it will be a hard job the first time you do it now once you've got this down to an acceptable level just by hand applying it on a cloth rub up and down the entire length of the pipe with the polish spend five or ten minutes doing this and this will just help take away some of those linear scratches that go around the circumference of the pipe then give it a really good buff up make sure that you remove every trace of polish from the pipe because if this is left there and it's left to burn on it will sort of take you back to square one now if you did decide to do this on a regular basis you would probably get away with just using the Meguiar's polish although for heavily soiled or scratched pipes you are going to still need to use that teacup polish obviously both polishes are great for any kind of metal but i wouldn't advise you using either of them on fine chrome they're just a little bit too aggressive for that in the case of chrome i would just stick to your wax polish that you use on your paintwork and whilst we're talking about paintwork 
Be very careful while you're using metal polishes in this manner. All bikes have different layouts and although it wasn't a problem on the Bonneville, if you're working in an area where the cloth may abrade against paintwork, alter the angle and make sure that it's not touching any paintwork because metal polish will cut through paint in no time. Right now that's sorted, I've still got the other pipe to do. Now I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've found it useful. I'll see if I can find a product link for these two polishes and I'll leave it in the video description down below. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I will be back next Wednesday, although I'm not quite sure what I'm doing yet. So until then, ride safely and I'll see you soon.